Hey guys, welcome to TST Garage. I'm Bart, and today in this video, I'll be showing you how to install the TST Industries brake light modulator on your bike. Now, a brake light modulator, sometimes called a strobe, sometimes called a brake light flasher, what it does is basically enables you to install some electronics on your bike so that when you press your brakes, the brake light flashes in some kind of pattern and alerts the drivers behind you that you will be stopping. Our particular brake light modulator comes pre-wired to a plug that interfaces with a sub-harness that we provide specific to your bike model that enables plug-and-play functionality with your bike. So that means that the installation is really fast and uh, you can do it yourself. Now the electronics inside, we do have the ability for you to program this unit to three different functions and then subsequently adjust the rate of the effect to your liking. Our first programmable mode is strobe alert. This mode will produce nine flashes and then stay solid for the duration of the brake engagement. Second one is intermittent pulser. Each cycle will flash 10 times and then pause. And then these cycles will repeat for the duration of the brake engagement. The last available option is pulser. And this one just basically provides continuous flashing for the duration of the brake engagement. Now we will show you how to install this. It's really simple. And then after the installation chunk, I will show you in detail how to get inside here, how to program the different modes and how to alter the rate of those different modes. We did think about the safety of such devices during the design phase. So we decided to design this in a way that it will be a pass through component in case you experience a failure on board here it will just pass through your normal brake function, which means you press your brake, your brake light lights up, there's just no effect. In case you do experience that failure, we do offer a warranty, so we have guys standing by in our support department that will take your call, email, Facebook message, whatever, and we'll get you replaced. And that's pretty much it. Now, I'm really excited to show you guys just how easy this is to put on and configure. So let's get started. For this presentation, we've got ourselves a bone stock Ninja 500 here. We do have a vehicle specific harness that will work with this bike. It plugs right into our brake light modulator and then presents an input and an output plug that will connect to the harness and taillight in line here right under the seat. So let's start by removing the passenger seat. All right, up here you'll notice a slight discrepancy from what you're looking at in your bike and ours. There is a tray here typically. I like to remove it because it just gets in the way of a lot of my work and also my presentations to you guys. So if this is still in place, you'll just need to get it forward, use a bungee cord or something, have somebody hold it for you, and then you'll have access to where we're gonna be working. Here is the wiring from the tail light going into the harness connector. The harness connector is right below here. You'll see it right here. It is hung on the frame on a little tab. It's more troublesome to remove it from the tab than to just do it blind in here, perform the modification blind in here. I'll just show you how that works. This is the kind of connector that's on there. The locking mechanism is facing down like this. We will need to reach around forefinger and press on this to release it from the mating connector. Very simple to do. Now we just mate the tail light connector into our intermediate sub harness on our brake light modulator and just plug that through. Before I go any further, I like to power up the bike, make sure Everything's working properly. We have function, so now it'll just be a matter of cable management. I've lengthened some of the harnessing here because the connector is no longer held in its original spot. So I'll just take up that slack there. And now we'll have to consider what to do with the body of the, the brake light modulator. I like this area here. I like to orient my brake light modulator body with the 
grommet facing down. If there's any water pouring over it, any moisture collecting on its body due to condensation or anything, it'll just flow right down and not ever back up into the unit. So this is where I'll place it. With this tray in place, there are areas to consider as shot off areas. We cannot place our modulator in that area. Otherwise, this would have been a valid spot. In fact, if you don't have that tray, that's a still a valid spot. But this works really well. If you notice here, there is a channel built in to our brake light modulator body. This is in the shape of our zip ties. This is meant to tie this off to a frame and hold it in place. So that's what we'll do here. I'll go around. I'll go around the frame component here. If you are still looking into adjusting your effect type and adjusting the effect rate, do not cinch this off to the frame just yet. You want to perform all those adjustments before you lock it down. I'm going to carry out the actual installation to the end here in this chunk. I think this is fairly secure, but we do, we do ship these with two cable ties in case you want to make yours extra secure. I recommend tying around the wiring downstream of the actual, um, the actual grommet. And they'll hold it nice and secure for you here. Just make sure that it's out of the impact zone of these components of the tray. All right, and that looks good. Rotate it down a little bit. Cut off the excess from the cable ties. And that's pretty much the whole installation. We replace any component that's been removed and job is done. For mode selection and rate adjustment, we will need to get inside this capsule to access the electronics. These two Phillips head screws will need to be removed. What I like to do is unscrew them until they disengage from their receiving threads and leave them in the cap. Otherwise, it's pretty easy to lose them. If we pull them off with the cap, they are self-captive. All right, now we'll identify the parts here. This button is the mode selector and this potentiometer is your rate adjuster. Clockwise is faster, counterclockwise is slower. Let's first do our selection of modes. With the brake pressed, press the button once to toggle to the next available program. Now the brake does have to be pressed so that the unit powers up, otherwise you won't be able to make the selection. If you find that you've pressed the button, but the selection has not been changed, just do it again with the brake pressed. So now we will go on to the next program, press the brake once more, press the button once, and now you're in the next mode. Now we've switched twice, so pressing it one more time will return to the original mode that your unit arrived in. Now for rate adjustment, we'll be using the potentiometer. With the brake pressed, we can turn it clockwise to make it go faster, counterclockwise to decrease the rate. Now in brake alert, you will only have nine flashes to make your adjustment and then it'll stay solid. This one doesn't actually lend itself to really fast flashing at the top of the range. Bottom of the range is unusable. So I like to set it somewhere towards three quarters to maybe 80% clockwise. And that does it for me. Now if we change to the next one, this one is the pulser. And this one just keeps on flashing. So I like to have it going pretty fast here. Choice is really up to you. If you want to explore the next mode, 
we have the intermittent pulser. This one to me belongs somewhere close to the top of the range, makes it the most visible. But again, freedom means choice. The decision is ultimately up to you. Once you're done with your adjustment and you're where you wanna be with all your modes and rates, replace the cap, turn the screws back in, and it really is just that simple. Replace your brake light modulator in the space that you des decided to keep it, and you're good to go.